Hi, this is Dean with DeanaCraft.com. I'm here to talk to you today about my lathe. I plan to do a lathe upgrade to my Grizzly lathe, and I'll show it to you right here. It's been a good lathe for me. I've had it since 2007. It's the G0462. It's already a variable speed lathe, and uh, you adjust the, the speed by turning this handle here. It goes from 600 to 2400 as it is right now. It lacks uh, the ability to go slower than 600, and a lot of times when I'm first starting out, I wish that I, w that I had something slower than 600. So, um, also you can't go in reverse. So uh, by going in reverse, that's gonna help me when I'm uh, sanding my banjo pots that I build. Like it's got this box here that you can see. The box is actually full of sand. So I've got like four bags of sand in there to add some weight. This lathe is normally 285 pounds or so and uh, probably got at least another 150 in that in that box of sand and it also provides a nice place for my for my uh, my chisels. A jig here that um, I was introduced to by Noel Booth who's a fine banjo builder in North Carolina. I went and visited him and his wife and he showed me his shop one day and gave me the tour and um, went into detail about how this stuff worked and I came home and built myself one of those. Basically I use a, a sanding drum that I've built to fit the contour of my pot and um, there's my jig there that slides the neck into the, into the spinning sanding jig. So here's what I'm going to do to the lathe though. I've already got my screws out of this cover. So in here, the, um, the variable speed in this thing is mechanical with this, um, this pulley set that changes width. So as the top, at the top, when I turn the little, the little handle in the front, it expands and contracts this, changing the, the size of that um, pulley. And this one down here adjusts automatically via spring-loaded. Well, recently I had this one on the, on the motor shaft seized up on me and I had to replace it. And while I was thinking about fixing that, it's already been fixed, but while I was looking into fixing it, I started asking my wife to see what, what it would take to give me a real variable speed um, lathe. Um, the motor's gonna be gone with this motor mount. That whole motor mount thing is gonna be gone. Um, both of these pulleys I'm gonna have to replace. I'm going to lose this, I think, because we're going to a 220 drive. So I won't have my digital speed readout, but I'm okay with that. Okay, I was able to procure an inverter duty motor, which is what you need to run with a variable speed drive. And I got a great deal on this. Um, the price was fairly reasonable as it was, but um, when it came, it had been dented in the in shipment. And the vendor, SMS Tool and Supply on eBay, uh, did a great job taking care of me. Uh, they credited off some money and I just beat this little part out here with a hammer and repainted the whole motor and it looks great. I've gone ahead and designed, uh, done some detailed drawings here to design my uh, motor mount that I'm going to have to have fabricated by a welder and a detailed drawing to lay out how the spindles are going to line up so that I can calculate or that I could calculate the uh, distance between the spindles which is what you need along with the diameter of the pulleys in order to calculate the uh, length of the, of the pulleys that you have to buy. And I wanted to order everything when I ordered it just so I wouldn't have to pay multiple shipping charges and delay the process. This is what the lathe looks like after all the electronics have been taken out of it. I've removed my, uh, my speed adjustment and my power um, switch, that all comes out. I lost my um, speed display and it's just an empty hulk there waiting for my new pulley set. And here is my pulley set all ready to go. I, uh, the motor that I chose has a 7 8 inch shaft and so I'm, I'm using dual pulleys so two, um, two V-belts will go on these things to give me some extra um, 
extra friction, whatever, extra drive. They were cheaper than going with those, um, those notched belts for power transmission. This is the pulley that's going to go on the shaft. It is a 24 millimeter. It's a metric shaft. So when you're trying to replace that, look for something 24 millimeter and be aware that the key size, the shaft key, is not a standard. So what I had to do is take a regular, the key shaft or the key size that came with that and I had to grind it uh, with a file and a vise to make that work. And I believe I have calculated these correctly as 29 inches. I bought some 5 8 inch belts. Those will fit nicely on there. I think I'll have good reliable power. Right, this is the motor mount I had fabricated. found a guy locally that could weld it for me. And I uh, came up with a design and he was able to do that. And it looks, uh, looks fairly substantial. I haven't tested it. I've got some, some lateral bracing here that's going to keep it from flexing. And, um, and also this little thing here that's going to keep it from flexing that way, I hope, or flexing, yeah, in that, you know, wet wobble in that way. You may be able to find a, um, a motor, this is the original motor, that fits on this original motor mount, and that would save you some, some heartache. I couldn't figure out what C-face front this, or C-face size this was without taking it all apart, and that was too much trouble, so I just figured I would figure out a, um, my own motor mount, uh, you may be able to figure this out easier than you could to get something custom manufactured. Okay, I have my motor mount mounted on the lathe. Seems to be fairly rigid. There's no, no flex in it. Next step, mount my motor on the motor mount and align my pulleys so that the, uh, the, there won't be any excessive wear for my belts. Right, I've got my motor mounted. The next thing I have to do is get my, um, my dust cover here, my, my safety cover, to fit on there because with the new motor it's, it's not going to fit. You can kind of see, if you look straight down this plane here, you can kind of see that it lines up with the exterior of this of this rim. And if I take my divider, I have a lathe tool here, caliper, whatever you like to call it. If I measure that, you can see where I'm at. And I can compare that on my dust cover. and it'll fit. Now I've already cut this off. It may not look like yours. I've cut this off previously because I had trouble removing this this safety cover from the lathe when I had to change the uh, the belt. Anyway, I'm going to remove this part right here. So I get to do some surgery on the lathe. Let's see how that works. Lay still. Sorry for that Tarantino moment. I had to make sure you guys are still awake. It's time for the unveiling. Got this all complete, more or less. Functional. The heart of it is my Eaton variable frequency drive. The model number is going to be presented in a spreadsheet with all the parameters used to set it up. On screen setup process to get this thing working. It's a little complicated, it's not really an appliance for general consumption but I think I've provided you with everything you need to set it up if you follow my my parts list. It's attached to my three-phase motor that's all mounted. It's one and a half horsepower three-phase motor. I can go forward and reverse at variable speeds. I've also affixed a um, a remote controlling unit that you can see here it's got a stop, a start, forward reverse and a potentiometer for speed and I've utilized some rare earth magnets on the back with a piece of wood 
that will allow me to put that anywhere I want, just like some of the higher price lathes that I've seen on the internet. I think I like it over on that edge right there because I, I typically do a lot of my turning on this end of my lathe and I can get to my stop button bap, just like that. I get to my stop button just like that. It's a twist, it's a twist stop unit so when I have to twist it once, I, uh, once I've stopped it and then I can press my start. Cranks right up. Smooth and powerful. Variable speed. I can stop it. Reverse. Now I will note that if you're going to run this thing in reverse, you're going to have to be sure that you have a set screw. Or equip your uh, your face plates and all your chucks with a set screw. I have not done that yet, so I can't actually use it in reverse, but I will shortly. Stop. That sound you hear is a fan in my in my variable frequency drive unit. Just keeps it cool. When I'm done with it, I'm going to unplug it and keep it generally unplugged. That eliminates the power cord from stretching across my shop, but it also um, saves this expensive piece of equipment if it ever gets struck by lightning or any kind of power surges. Anyhow, hope this is useful. Please check it out on my website at www.dinocraft.com. Thank you. Bye-bye.